It's working for my good. Amen. Thank you. All things, not some things, Amen. not the good things, not the bad things, all things. Amen. He said he worked all things together. For the good that love them are called according to his purpose. Uh, I like that. Even when I can't understand it, he, he's, he's threading it together. He weaving it together. He knitting it together to bring something good out of you. Only God can get the clay and make another on the potter's wheel as it spins. Make something new out of something that's old. The God we serve. Thank you, Lord. You're working everything out for my good. Yeah, I understand now, Lord. I understand now. When I was young, I didn't understand it. I thought you was trying to hurt me. David said it was glad that you afflicted me. Because when you afflicted me, I learned what not to do. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. How everybody feeling this morning? Yes. Everybody feeling all right this morning. I'm feeling good too. I'm feeling good. Had me some good rest. Studied to show myself approved. Okay. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, and I just want to share it with y'all today. Amen. Amen. Um, today I will be coming out of Matthew 5 and 5. Dealing with the B attitudes. Um, when you have it, say amen. Matthew 5 and 5. When you have it, say amen. amen. It says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's the B attitude I'll be dealing with today. Amen. Um, we dealt with blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. We dealt with blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now we're dealing with blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Today I want to deal with this B attitude, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I have three points I want to deal with. I want to um, identify the word meek so we can understand what meek means. Therefore, we can walk it out in our lives. Without no understanding, you ain't going to be able to apply it to your life. So I want to deal with that one. That'll be the first one. Then I want us to see the characteristic of meekness. People that had the meek characteristics. And then I want to deal with how we will inherit the earth. If the meek shall inherit the earth, I want to deal with how we going to inherit it. Amen. Those are my three points that I will be dealing with today. Um, I'm going to take my time and let the word of God speak. Amen. Uh, let me pray before we get into this word. Lord, saturate this place with your spirit, Lord. Um, I just thank you that you just right now um, clearing out hearts, clearing out minds. Um, letting thoughts run away um, that they won't take from what's going on right now, Lord. Our mind can wander from left to right. Even though we are in the building, our mind can be 
all discombobulated somewhere else, Lord. Let their mind be on the word, Father, that they may receive the word with meekness that can save their soul, Lord. As the word is being scattered out, let their hearts be ready to receive, let it fall on good ground. We bind the enemy um, that try to take what we don't understand. Um, let us all get understanding and all we get, let us understand the word of God, Lord. Just continue to have your way throughout this. Um, just let your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, let's deal with the, um, I want to identify the word meek. The word in Greek for meek is paras, meaning mild of dispensation. A calm person at heart and spirit, one with oneself. Mild, calm, not outrageous, not outlandish, just mild. Um, it reminds me of when I go to the store um, and I want some, 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 some seasoning or something. I don't want it too hot. I want it just mild. Some on my tacos, some sauce on my tacos. I just, I don't want it too hot. I want it, I want it mild, you know. You get something too hot, it, 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 it can burn a little bit. Sometimes I like it hot, but most of all, I like it mild. Uh, you know how to be mild. It's, you just come. That's, that's one way. Gentleness of spirit. A soft person, not hard to deal with. <sighs> How many of it is that's, that's a, ooh, that, I'm, I'm working on that, Lord. I don't like to be soft. I don't want you to take advantage of me. But when you meek, that don't mean you weak. <laughs> Let me say it again. When you meek, that don't mean you weak. Gentleness, a spirit, a soft person, someone that you can easily get along with. Someone that's not always invoking their way. <sighs> Went to work on Thursday. And I was the first one there. We can't clock in. Uh, 1050. I'm standing at the little old thing to clock in. I'm there, it's a line. And one of the dudes just tried to just just slide in and just cut in front of me. I I I, I really want gentle in spirit. I really wasn't mild. I turned around and say, you just going to cut in front of me like that? Oh, I know you're not just going to cut in front of me like that. In front of everybody? I demand my, you, you ain't going to disrespect me like that in front of everybody. He looked at me and weighed me off like that, like, I ain't trying to hear what you talking about. I say, oh man, I know he, I know he didn't lost all his marbles in his mind. <laughs> I went gentle in spirit. I went soft. So everybody looking at me, one of the leaders there, calm down, Jamaica. You don't have to be talking out. I want my respect. Y'all ain't gonna just cut it. So had to go outside and drink some of my coffee and the Holy Spirit went to dealing with me. He said, you want me. You want it your way. He said, you had an opportunity to display Christ and you wanted to display Jermaine. I said, oh. He went to cutting, left and right. He said, you had an opportunity to say, oh, if you want to get in, you, you, could, it's, you could have went in first even though I had the ability and the power to say, now this is my position. 
I could have been meek and said, you take this. See, meekness is strength under control. Even though I had the strength and the power to enforce my way, but when you meek, you let others through and have their way. Because you you don't you you have no reputation. I'm talking about, I'm trying to describe meekness to you. And that came to mind. Missive. When you meek, you you ain't always trying to bogart your way. You ain't always trying to trying to move how you want to move. You quiet when you step. You gentle when you speak. You submissive to when you want to deal with somebody or you dealing with somebody. You're not always trying to impose your way. Someone who is able to remain calm, subdued, even when being provoked. Ooh, that's hard to do. I'm talking about me. It's hard to remain calm when somebody poking at you. On purpose to to try to get something out of you. <sighs> Lord help us out. Lord help us out. But when you been meek and you walking in the spirit, you can have all that going on and hold your composure. <sighs> it's not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. So you got to let the Christ shine and not let you shine. Because that's the ultimate meeting person in the world, Christ. Strength under control. Strength under control is someone who is me. Can we see ourselves in those descriptions of meetings? If not, we need to continue to let the Holy Spirit break us and shape us until that character of meekness is on display. Huh? If you're not gentle in spirit, if you're not calm, if you're not soft, if you're not mild in position, the Holy Spirit wants you to let him come and just begin to tune you up, mold and shape you into that. Amen? That's the description of meekness. See, that's why we got the Holy Spirit on the inside because the fruits of the Spirit is gentleness. That's one way we can be meek, just gentle. Um, I want to share with you three things that use meekness. One is a doctor. A doctor used meekness to calm a person down through the medicine. A sailor, a sailor likes the gentle breeze of the wind. It feels meek upon the skin. A former that breaks a horse will to ride so the horse can be meek. Those are three things that use me. See, strength under control is like this. All those things are me when they are under control. See, the proper dose of medicine can heal, but too much can kill. Let me say that again. The doctor have the, the prescription to give you, but if you choose to take the same thing that can be me is the same thing that can strength under control. A gentle breeze can bring refreshing. Me and my wife stepped out the other day, early this early in the morning, and it just felt the breeze was just coming across my skin, I say, ooh, 
feels good. But a hurricane can destroy everything that it come in its path. Tornado can flip over everything. That same wind that was breezing across you, if it's not under control, it can flip everything around. Turn everything upside down. When meek is not under control, it explains itself in anger and outrage. When we not meek, oh, we full of anger. Oh, have you ever seen somebody raging and anger just turning red? You, you can argue in your house and I ain't never been in there. Yes. I can walk through that door and feel everything. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. You can feel it. I never walked in your house before. When I walk through the door, something ain't right. Y'all been arguing. Tensions, the tension's so strong, it shifts the atmosphere. Yes. But if you ever walk in somebody's house and it's just, man, they can just sell up, get a pill and just sleep on the couch. <laughs> It's so, the spirit just rock them. I've been in the houses where the, you can feel the, the peace in her, the meekness in her. A horse broken can, can work, but a horse that's will can be dangerous. If you get a horse, a horse will ride to his death for his master. But if you get a horse that's acting the fool, Kick you all the way to the front of the gate. You kick you all the way, kick you north, south, west. But when you break that horse, when you break that horse's wheel, you can get on there and that horse just me. He gone. Let him get on there and you ain't broken. And he ain't you ain't broke his spirit. You ain't put that meekness in him. Man, he gone. It's dangerous. Just like us when we not broke by the spirit of God. I'm dangerous. I cut both ways. Two-headed sword. But when God is trying to do, he trying to treat us just like that horse. He trying to break our will. For the spirit can ride on us so we can do his will. Those are strengths under control. Is meekness, not weakness. See, some... Some of us think, because we meet, we weak. No. You ain't weak because you meet. That means you got all the power. You just choose not to use it. Huh. See, I got, Jesus got all the power, but when he was on the cross, he chose not to use it. He said, not my will, but your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. Amen? Amen. Meekness. Colossians. something we have to practice if we want to be me. We got to practice it. It's not automatic. <sighs> Come on now. Just because we got the spirit on the inside, which is all the fruits of the spirit in one, is gentleness. It's still, you got to practice to be gentle. That was just a test so I can practice being me. But I went left and had to come in and apologize and humble myself in front of everybody because I ain't been practicing meanness. Look what Colossians say. 
3 and 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on. That put on man, you got to do something. See, my britches just didn't put their self on. I had to put one leg and the other leg. Come on now. He say, put on tender mercies. Kindness, humility, meekness, and long suffering. Those things we got to put on. We always want somebody else to put it on. No, 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 no. Meekness, we got to put on. We got to dress ourselves in that if we want to see that come to fruition. Amen? Amen. The meek shall inherit the earth. Not the crazy, not the wild, not the discombobulated, the me. And we was all those things until Christ came in. Amen? Meekness is not automatic. It's something we have to practice. Let us, James 1 and 21, let us know, let us know to receive the word of God with meekness. It is able to save our soul. We understand that how meek we are, how we receive the word of God. If you already came in saying, I ain't going to try to listen to nothing. Sometimes we just come in, I already, I hear you, Pastor. I hear you, Pastor. But I ain't studying it right now. That ain't meekness. The meekness is able to receive the word because it's able to save your mind, save your soul, your will, and everything else that's connected to it. When you, when you meet, you can receive the word. Not only that, when you meet, you can receive correction. That's the real test. My son do not like no correction. I see where he get it from. Don't we don't like nobody to correct us. Come on. Man. My wife don't like correction. <laughs> Jermaine don't like correction. But I learned something. Two wrongs don't make a right. If you're telling me the truth, whether I like it or not, it don't change that it's true. The reason why I'm plucking and I'm and I'm ducking and I'm fussing, cause you hit me. And I want my leg back. You cut me. Hall of nights. You shot me in my peaky toe. Now I got to get it back. But when you meek, you can let somebody else slide on through. Take correction. Take discipline. Take that and move on and apply it to your life and see the fruit of it. One thing I learned is somebody tell you the truth, they love you. How hard it is if somebody tell you the truth, you got all that in your eye, go wipe that at your eye. Some people see you with all types of stuff all on your face and won't even tell you the truth. Come on. If you love me, you'll tell me the truth. I think it was Proverbs say, a friend loves at all times, even when he try to hurt you. A true friend really love you. But a kisses of the enemy can deceive. We seen that with Jesus. Peter 1 and 3. Peter 1, 3. Um, 3 and 4 describes a woman of meekness. <sighs> Look what it say. Rather let it be the hidden person of heart with a uncorruptible beauty. The beauty that she has is uncorruptible. 
a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God. He said, don't let it be the external, the out with gold and jewelry and all the stuff that, that you have. No, let it be the hidden, that quiet spirit, that meek spirit, that, that, that gentle spirit. He said, it, that's how the, the women of old used to carry their sin. When they want the men, when they men over, they didn't just, they didn't bore. They was meek and quiet and let God deal with our hearts. And then when God deal with our hearts, we can. But it was so good that Sarah called Abraham, not my husband, not my babe, not my boo. She called Abraham Lord. I ain't never heard my wife call me that. Everybody, yeah. She ain't never called me Lord. I guess I got some meekness to take care of. Abraham had Sarah calling him Lord. Bad man. Bad man. Bad man. Yes, Lord. That come from a gentle and quiet spirit. We don't, I don't make them like that no more. <laughs> Ooh, now they four tough. Now they four tough now, boy. They four tough now. They four tough. Can't go in there, go and get no clothes. They got all the men clothes and everything. They want to be us for real. They four tough. Let me get back on the subject. Let me get it. I didn't drift it out. Come back, Jermaine. Come back, Jermaine. Come back. Come back. Come back. But that's meekness on display. Man. My son is a witness. Me and my wife barely are. 14 years. 14 years. I ain't. I, I, I. God is my witness. When we when we when we see that, uh, we stopping for for a whole argument break out. It say stop the argument while it's small because if you don't, it a whole it'll bring up bust the whole. But we stop it when it's small. We don't go to sleep with it on our spirit and our mind because we gonna wake up with it, and it be hovering in our hearts. She got a quiet and meek spirit. Even when I was all out of control, I'm talking about, ooh, Pluto, Mars, I, I was all right. it's out of space with it. She still held me down. She didn't call me Lord, but she held me down. Amen, and I thank God for it. I thank God for it. Let us deal with the characteristics of meekness. I have three people that are meek that I wanna talk about. One. David, Moses, and Jesus. Let's deal with David. David wrote Psalms 37 and 11. It's in 22. Psalms 31 and 11 says, The meek shall inherit the earth. If David can write about it, you know he had to have it in him to write about it. How can you write about meek if they're not meek? Let, let me say that again. How can you write about me if you ain't got me qualities in you? I think the words say, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So David had a meek spirit in him because Jesus took the quote from Psalms 37 and talked about it right here. The meek shall inherit the earth. Where did Jesus get it from? He got it from David. Amen. But not only that, that made David a meek person. Saul, he had a chance to kill Saul. And he didn't use that chance to kill Saul. But Saul came in and he was using the restroom in the cave. And David walked up to him, cut a piece of his garment, and let Saul know, hey, I could have got you. But his meekness 
that's not weakness, he let Saul make it. See, when you got a meek spirit, even though you got your opponent down, and to the dead, to the rights, you can let him make it. David had Saul dead to the rights, but in his meekness, he just cut the piece of his clothes and just showed him, hey, I could have had you, buddy. I could have had you. That's the characteristics of me. Sometimes me make you look weak. But if you really know, I got all the power to turn everything upside down. I'm just not using it. I'm in the hemi. I just don't want to press the gas on it. My son be in the hemi. He learned not to press the gas. Even though he got all that power, it's under control. David, Moses. Moses was called the meekest man on earth. Numbers 12 and 3. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the earth, upon the face of the earth. Can you imagine it? The Bible say one nobody meeker than Moses. And I had to think, not the same Moses that killed that, killed that dude. That Moses? The same Moses that didn't speak to the rock, but struck the rock? The same Moses? But I had to look at Moses disposition because Moses is the same one that led a million people out. And at that time, he was dealing with all the people. His uncle Jethro had to tell him, hey, you got to put some more people in order to deal with these people. Uh, you need to get some structure in order. But imagine everybody bringing their problems to you. You got to be me. I can't even handle somebody calling my phone trying to wear me out. <laughs> Moses dealing with millions of people. Not only that, the characteristic that's what make Moses um, meek is he had a chance where they was talking about Moses and they was just saying if you can hear from Moses we can hear from Moses too God stepped in the situation God say how y'all fix y'all mouth to talk to my prophet Moses like that wasn't y'all not afraid to say something about Moses don't y'all know I talked to Moses face to face and at that time Ma Mara, I might be pronouncing her name wrong, but I think it's Moses' sister. Leprosy came all over her body. Aaron stepped back and said, hey, I think we, I think we seen. Stutter Moses saying, oh yeah, y'all should never be speaking against me. Look, 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 look. Moses began to pray for, for, for his for, the, for his sister in the leprosy. See, when you got a meek spirit, you're not taking advantage to see your enemies get knocked down. I, I, I want to go back to David because it came back to my spirit. When David seen Saul die, everybody in the camp got mad. Because David was weeping for Saul. The same person that was hunting him down. The same person that was trying to kill him. The same person that was trying to destroy him. David was so full of meekness. He cried. And they say, we, you need to stop crying about Saul. He was the one trying to kill you. But when you got the spirit of meekness in you. You can do stuff like that. You can cry over your enemies. Let me get back on track. Let me get back on track. Jesus 
is a person of meekness. Amen. 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 Okay. Jesus is a person of meekness. The reason why I say that, when he was on his way tussling in the garden, he said, not my will, but your will be done, Lord. He set aside his will to let God's will be done so he can walk in that spirit of meekness. Not only on, on that, on the, when he was on the cross, he said, he said not a word. <sighs> meekness, gentleness. And then when he had a chance, he prayed for his enemies. On the cross, he said, Lord, don't charge this against them. They don't know what they're doing. <sighs> they didn't beat him all night long. Skin all up off his back. Toe up from the floor up. But he's still forgiven. Yes. <sighs> Meekness. Strength under control. Look at our Lord. Having the power to call with a thousand angels. <sighs> but submitted up under the power. Submitted up under the stress. Submitted up under the anguish. Not for his will. <clears throat> Not for what he done wrong, but for all us. For all us. Who is the meekest person? Jesus. Come on now. Who can tolerate what Jesus has been through? And took it in stride. All because he wanted to save that which was lost. Man. David. Moses, Jesus, that's who we strive to have that meekness and character so we can inherit the earth. But we got it already on the inside. Because what, what it's saying is when you walk in the spirit, you are already walking in meekness. See, the reason why I went off at work, because I was already in the flesh. But if I was in the spirit, what? I would have been so gentle, so meek. Would have just let him pass. Since you want to rush to get up here, you can go, go on the side and. But no meat, mister. Oh, flesh. But when you walk in the spirit, you display meekness. When you walk in the spirit, you can, you can look over foolishness. Come on now. So we didn't deal with it. Now, let me go. Let me, get my, let me get my nose right. Now, let us deal with how we're going to inherit the earth. First is to inherit something. The, the key word is inherit. Let me get it right. The key word is inherit. So to inherit something, that means somebody had to leave it to you. It wasn't given to you, it was left to you. The key word in the, in the text is Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. To inherit something, you got to be connected to somebody that got it already. When I die, if I got land, property, cars, houses, all this, and I in leave it or you inherit my son, he inherit whatever I say he gonna get. Somebody already got to have it for you can inherit something. See, Jesus made it plain. He already got everything. I like that. Jesus already said in Psalms 24 and 1, 
The earth is the Lord's and now the fullness thereof. Let me say that again. How are we going to inherit it? The earth already belongs to the Lord. I'm connected to the Lord. How am I connected to the Lord? I'm glad you asked. Romans 8 and 15 through 17. It's, it talks about I have been, I have the spirit of adoption. So you know when you get adopted into something, you get everything that the family has. See, if I'm in an orphanage and they come and adopt me, I don't stay at the orphanage. I go moving. They have. When they cook a meal, I get a meal. When they got they bathtub, become my bathtub. You know, I since they adopt me, I get everything that they have. See, we've been an adopted with Christ. How have we been adopted? Through the Spirit. In that same text, it says the Spirit bears witness that we are children of God. 